We've built a lot of incredible high-powered cars at Toyota and have found the weak links the hard way. The Porsche 996 and 997.1 turbo engines were originally developed in the Porsche GT1 car that had quite the winning streak through the 90s. The 996 turbo engine is basically a detuned version of the GT1 racing engine. And as commonplace as 1,000 horsepower cars are these days, you may be surprised to find out that the racing engine produced only 600 horsepower per car. So what we're considering weak points now weren't even attainable at the time the engine was designed. Even the street version of the GT1 produced only 536 horsepower, which these days is barely a mild tune. That being said, there is a path to quite reliable high power in these cars. So be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to learn more in the upcoming videos. From here, we can start with the basic roadblocks to the upgrade path that must be taken down to move forwards. With the cars producing 410 horsepower from the factory, a simple tune can quickly take them to the limits of the turbos, around 460 to 480 horsepower, depending on the quality of fuel you're running. The 25-pound compressors on these turbos can net closer to 500 horsepower, theoretically, but the restrictive exhaust curbs that a bit. So a proto-tune and an X-pipe can get you to 500 horsepower, but you just can't make much more horsepower due to the turbo limitations unless you were running nitrous or nitromethane that carries its own oxygen in the fuel. With a turbo upgrade, i.e. K1616G, K1665G2, K1668 or more, you'll have enough turbo for nearly 700 horsepower, but won't make it because you'll run out of injector somewhere around 540 to 560 horsepower. Yes, 40 pound injectors times six cylinders over 0.5 BSFC is only 480 horsepower, but that's rated at three bar. At 3.8 bar, you'll gain about 12.5% more fueling for 540 to 560 horsepower. So let's throw in a nice set of 80 pound injectors to double the power capacity, just for fun. Now you'll run up a bit more to just over 600 horsepower, where you'll hit a few roadblocks. The clutch is one, so we'll throw a 764 or 487 socks pressure plate and lightweight flywheel setup to hold it a while longer then run out a fuel pump. For the fuel pump, we'll put our single Walbro 450 drop-in pump in the tank and continue on. Well, the intake starts becoming quite restrictive here. To handle that, we'll put a pair of our fender well intakes and billet blow-off valves in, along with a nice set of proto intercoolers, Y-pipe, 74 millimeter throttle body, and a plenum. Just to be sure we'll go good for a while. In the low to mid 600s, the fuel starts becoming an issue. Not due to flow, but more due to the combination of octane boost and compression ratio getting cranky. MS-109 or other fuels are nice, but expensive solution. Meth injection is a lower cost solution with its pros and cons. E85 is fantastic when available, but any of these solutions allows us to take this engine a bit further. However, in this range, we start reaching the limits of the rods and head studs, which both tend to fail right in the low to mid 600 foot pounds of torque. 996 turbo engines tend to make similar power to torque numbers with a stock intake manifold ports and cams. So we're kind of stuck here for a bit, unless we boost ramp. With the OEM boost control or an aftermarket boost controller with boost by RPM, we can bring the torque right up in this range and ramp the boost to maintain the torque from falling off. We recently did a race car for a client that another shop built a nice 3.8 for him, but only updated to 10 millimeter aftermarket head studs. So we had to limit the torque to 800 foot-pounds, which was able to hit quickly around 1.4 to 1.5 bar on E85. But with a boost ramp, we were able to produce 1,000 wheel horsepower on that car and meet his goal for power without having to tear down the engine again. So on the low to mid 600 foot-pounds limit, we'd ramp to 750 to 800 horsepower if you'd like to push it that hard. It certainly makes for an exciting car that feels like it's never gonna stop pulling, kind of GT3 style but we'll lack that smack in the back torque feel everyone loves so much with turbo cards. So let's go inside and upgrade the internals with some proto rods, 12 millimeter head studs, and some comedic gaskets, just a basic build. Not changing the power curve, but strengthening build so we can continue the story. While we're down there, let's not forget to follow the Porsche TSB about the oil gallery plugs and stake them so they don't randomly fall out. We'll also be checking the intermediate shaft gear and prepping it for some higher power. At this point, we're out of turbos again, so let's throw some Zona XR 1100s, Garrett GT 3076s, EFR 7163s, or whatever your flavor happens to be. But we'll run out of fuel again, 
through the tiny OEM line, somewhere in that eight to 900 range. We've made over that with series pumps helping out with the pressure drop, but it's much better to just upgrade the line to 8AN. If you're running E85, you'll be wanting to drop the second pump in our dual wall row drop-in pump setup and finish off the fuel system with all Teflon hoses and bump the injectors up in the 1650 cc range. And unless I'm missing something, we'll be able to tune you up in the 1000 wheel horsepower range. On a strengthening only build, this will be taking somewhere around 2.2 bar of boost. But we're protomotive, so let's make it better. Let's go back to the engine. We'll throw an 80.4 crank, proto rods for Strulker cranks, our 103.6 piece and C's, and come out with a 4.1 liter engine. While we have the heads off, we'll port the intakes to GT3 spec, upgrade the valve springs, and change out the intake manifold for a GT3 intake. This is our cookie cutter build that we love so much and was featured in the Roads Untraveled video. We found a thousand horsepower Porsche where you'd least expect it. With this build, we'll need to revisit some of the previous upgrades. We'll update the clutch to our Proto Dual Clutch to handle double the power of a Sox 764-487 setup. We'll also be running out of turbo if you want the power to go up over a thousand wheel horsepower and change. Although this setup is amazing for a street car. The response and torque is better than a factory car with tiny little turbos on it, but with two and a half times the capacity now. The power under the curve is just monstrous. It's truly a great setup. For those that want more, we upgrade the turbos to GT3586 HTA for 1200 range, Zona 7864s for 1280 to 1300 wheel horsepower, or for stupid power, we did some GT3794s and ran a 4.2 with the same build, but an 82.4 stroker crank versus 80.4 crank to over 1500 wheel horsepower. And we're still running the factory ECU. Still want more? Rather than throwing more boost at it, let's use our PM. Let's go back to the engine and change the heads, cams, lifters, and actuators over to full GT3 parts. With the super low mass of the GT3 lifters and huge cams, we can now rev the engine up into the 8500 range. With the same boost and increased RPM range, this will now push us up into the 1750 to 1850 horsepower range. Yes, we can go further with more boost, but we started this out talking about weak links and a reliable path. So that's what we're doing here. I'd take a 4.1 cookie cutter build, hands down over a strengthening only build for reliability, especially in the 1000 plus horsepower range. A 4.1 could produce this at barely over 1.4 bar, with very docile manners and everyday drivability, where the strengthening only build can get there, but we'll be running from 2.2 bar for special fuels and have very limited upgrade capability from that point. A GT3 top end based 4.1 can be even more fun producing that power at barely over a bar of boost. And while the GT3 top end may be the king of the hill for crazy power numbers and record setting times, you'll need to drive the crap out of it to get there with all that RPM. Maybe I'm just getting old or maybe maturing in our builds. Either way, super response, amazing drivability, and power under the curve are going to win out for me. I want to build an engine for what I do in the car 99% of the time. Not a purpose-built racing engine that I'll use 1% of the time and be unhappy the rest of the time. So on that note, we'll leave you with the path to 1,000 wheel horsepower and beyond for the Porsche 996 Turbo and give you a lot to think about on your journey. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and like and leave comments about what you'd like to see in future videos. Thank you so much for watching.